Various ancient books unveil bits and pieces of humanity's past. Among the most prevalent and revealing of them all is the Bible. When looked upon with the worn glasses of yesterday's centuries, this compilation of holy texts might look like a bunch of bogus stories, esoteric at best. However, the reality we're confronting today has designed superior glasses, which, if used to read from this revered scripture, will let you see events in a totally different light. Book of Daniel, chapter 8, verses 15 to 27. Daniel could see the silhouette of a man approaching him. He heard a voice coming from near the banks of the river Ulai, from where he stood not far. Gabriel, help this man understand the vision. By the time the mysterious man reached Daniel, the Israelite was overcome with fear. Understand, O mortal, that the vision is for the time of the end. The angel comforted him. Daniel was now into a trance-like state, face to the ground, but Gabriel grabbed him and helped him on his feet. Listen, I will tell you what will take place later in the period of wrath, for it refers to the appointed time of the end. And Daniel saw a series of events unfolding right behind his eyes. He learned of four great nations, which stem from another even mightier, and of an unholy leader who will cast great wrath upon the powerful and the people of the Holy Ones, and will become so strong that no human hand will break him, apart from the Prince of Princes, who will be the last one opposing this boundless and unscrupulous leader. After the vision had faded, Daniel felt sick for a number of days before getting up on his feet again. Even then, he couldn't understand the vision. And there is no wonder, as the action in the Old Testament happens at a time when people possess no advanced technology, or so it is said. To solve this riddle, we must first decipher who Gabriel is. There aren't that many accounts in the scripture referring to him. Nonetheless, they are sufficient to highlight his otherworldly traits and importance. Gabriel is an archangel found in very close relationship to the divine creator of Christian, Hebrew, and Muslim faiths. He is usually found in the Lord's presence and does his bidding at will. He is the seed messenger who announces the Virgin Mary of Nazareth of her upcoming conception of Jesus Christ, son of the Lord and rightful ruler to the throne of David. Luke 1.26 In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. Mary said, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And according to Muslim accounts, Gabriel is the one who reveals Prophet Muhammad the wisdom of the Quran. In the first chapter, Gabriel speaks of the creation myth, where God conceives the first human being using a clot of congealed blood. Further on, Gabriel entrusts Muhammad with an Ark of incommensurable power, comparable only to the Ark of the Covenant, another powerful artifact known to have caused much destruction in both Christian and Hebrew doctrines. Helping women bear children after a certain age, or without having sexual intercourse, would all sound like bogus claims, and also the ancient machinery of mass destruction. However. Looking at it with present-day knowledge, 
we can distinguish quite clearly that the information contained within these sacred texts refer to beings with advanced technology, never seen before by people of those ages. While the moments of surprise conception can be attributed to in vitro fertilization or another form of genetic engineering, the destructive arc can be explained as a sophisticated gadget to reinforce the idea of God's supreme power. Wouldn't it be easy for developing nations to ascribe these incredible deeds to a supreme being referred to as the Lord, the Holy of Holies? You have sinned a great sin in the sight of God. You are not worthy to receive these Ten Commandments. When in reality, we could be talking about an advanced pre-flood civilization with a curious desire to reveal their superior knowledge and power to humans in a very cryptic manner. Researchers propose that the pyramids constructed around the world are, in fact, power plants. This is based on our new knowledge that they, in fact, are designed to tap the resonant power of the Earth and then to distribute it around the world. Teotihuacan matches precisely this model. It's built over caverns and had liquid mercury and mica incorporated into its design, and we know that the gods came and left from this place. Reinforcing these ideas is a manuscript held by the Russian Orthodox Church titled Gabriel's Instructions to Muhammad, which was secured from the Hagia Sophia Cathedral during the 1204 Constantinople Crusade. This time-worn writing speaks of the instructions offered by Gabriel to Muhammad regarding the Ark. The scene took place within the Hira cave on Mount Jabal un Nur in the vicinity of Mecca. Gabriel tells Muhammad to never abuse the Ark's power and to conceal it inside an altar in the place of angel worship before the creation of man and to keep it there until the Day of Resurrection. Saudi officials clear that the reason behind this tragic collapse of a crane over what has become an increasingly busy construction site around the Grand Mosque in Mecca. Correlating recent news, where over 100 people died in Mecca in 2015 due to a mysterious lightning offensive mechanism ascribed to both the Ark of the Covenant and Gabriel's Ark, it could be that this deadly machinery has become unstable therefore hinting at the recent arrival of the apocalypse. It is now believed that Gabriel's Ark is in the hands of the Russians, who, in late 2015, have taken the device aboard the Admiral Vadimisky military ship and escorted it to Antarctica, where it remains to this day. The Ark of Gabriel and that of the Covenant were concealed in remote places, so they won't cause harm and confusion until the time is right to resurface. If people today would witness the powers of the Ark on live display, the entire scientific paradigm will fall on its head. After all, we've been bushmen and hunter-gatherers in the not-so-distant past. There used to be nothing more sophisticated than rocks and sticks, remember? But having a full-force demonstration by these two devices, extremely advanced for the times when they made their appearance, would debunk many of the theories regarding human's history and evolutionary path. If gods really existed back then, and we ourselves are turning into gods today, wouldn't it be possible that early humans have attained godly status way before us? And with their advanced powers, have led the seemingly scarce human population at that time into believing that they were superior and divine beings? Using advanced technology to pull the rabbit out of the hat would surely impress the developing human societies back then, don't you think? But were they made of the same flesh and blood? Or were they rather a distinct race, and we humans are the byproduct. <laughs>